never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I don't see it, you're working Even when I can feel it, you're working You never stop, you never stop working You never stop, you never stop working Even when I Oh, 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 weather's nice today, so I'll, I'll get my tennis racket, yeah, yeah, oh, oh, let's put that in as well. Ah, I think I'm ready to roll, hang on, oh, wow, what are you doing? Ah, okay, oh, here we go. Oh, oh, I'm not the cleverest, I'm not daftest sometimes, aren't I? Good morning, boys and girls, mums and dads, cats and dogs and wiggly worms. It's been a long time since I last saw you, hasn't it? Christmas has been a gone. I can't believe we ended up in another lockdown. Hope I get my jab soon. We haven't been to school for ages, but, 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 I, I, yeah, I must admit, boys and girls, I fell asleep a couple of times during the Zoom meetings. Did you? Anyway, I hope you're all well and you enjoy today. Anyway, Maria, Maria, have you seen her, boys and girls? She's due to come in anytime. Good morning. Maria. Good morning, Claire. I'm over here. What oh, can I do for you? Oh, brilliant. How are you? I'm, I'm very well. I was going to ask you what you were up to today. Oh, well, actually, I was just going to pop upstairs because um, I was going to go and read my Bible. So, you know I like to try and do that every day. Oh. Just spend a little bit of time with God. So, yeah, so what can I do for you today, Clown? Well, um, how do you manage to spend your time with God? You work in a school. Mm-hmm. You go shopping. Yeah. You always make everybody's breakfast, dinner, tea and supper. You do the washing, you clean the house, you do the ironing, right. you clean my shoes sometimes. I do. You are amazing. Oh, thank you. You see, I'm always uh, too busy to spend a lot of time with God. Oh, that's really sad news to hear. So how do you manage? Well, you know, I just make sure every single day I just set a bit of time aside because... Jesus and God are really important to me. Ah, uh, me? And, and you, and I do know that. And, you know, when I read my Bible, it helps me get to know God better. It helps me to live my life the way Jesus would want me, me to. And when I spend time with God, I feel loved and encouraged. And sometimes when I've got some real big decisions to make, when I spend time reading God's word and praying, he helps me make those tough de decisions. I tell you what, I've been reading something in my Bible from a book called Joshua. Oh, oh tell me, please. Okay, and this is from Joshua 1, verse 8, and it says, Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate, meditate is think about, on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything that's written in it. And then you will be prosperous and successful. So this really helps us live our life. So I know you love God very, very much, don't you, Clown? I do. I really do. So could you teach me how to spend my time better then? 
Well, I can try, of course I can try, but you need to be able to listen. Oh, oh that's not my okay. greatest gift. Have a bit of a think and be honest mm. with yourself about maybe how you spend your day. So, okay, how do you spend your day, Clown? Let's have a little think about that. I'm just going to pop my Bible down here. Well, what I do every day, yeah. I put a play back together. Now that sounds really good organisational skills. And in my playback, I put all the things in I want to do. Right, okay, well, that sounds good. So what do you put in your playground, uh, play bag? Uh, shall I show you? That would be really lovely. Are you strong? Well, I try to be. I don't know how strong I am. How big is this play bag? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, let's have a look. Let's let's get Clown's play bag and see what he's putting in. Yeah! Oh, oh, wow. I'll tell you what, Rick. Are you strong? That is really, this is very, very heavy. Oh, nice Paw Patrol bag. Yeah, I'll see, hang on a minute. Clown is oh. obviously wanting to do a lot in his day. Yeah, if I don't keep busy, I get into trouble. Yeah, there is that. Okay, yeah. Okay, but so shall we see how you spend your day then? Oh yeah, please okay. do. Right, so tennis racket. Yeah, love a bit of tennis. Get yeah. my weather suits. I, I wanted to practice last week, but it was snowing. Yeah, no good to play tennis in the snow. No, no, um, ball doesn't bounce. Ball okay, bounce. a pool cue. Yeah, I yeah, love playing pool. You do. Yeah, we've got a pool cue in our nice. house, a real big one. A big, big pool cue in your house. No, no, a pool table. Pool That's table. it. Pool table. Okay. Whoa, and a magic wand, giant wand. What's this for? I, I've been practicing. What have you been practicing well, then? Uh, oh, my wow. friend Steph. Right. The great Steph Arnold. He's been teaching Steph me to Arnold. do some tricks. Has he now? Some gospel ones. He's brilliant. He, he's brilliant. He keeps so, telling me he's brilliant I'm, anyway. I'm glad you like him, Clown. Yep, yeah, yeah. Okay, and then we've got. Oh, hang on. I'm going to get a couple of things I can spot here. So we've got a TV remote. Yeah, yeah. I've got to watch Cartoon Network in the morning before breakfast. Okay. Makes me laugh. It's <laughs> very early for Telly Clown. Yeah. And an Xbox controller. Yeah, yeah. I love Xbox. I've got a new game. Oh, is it a Lego game? No, 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 I can't afford that yet. Yeah. They're about £50. Are they? I'm oh, saving okay. up. Right, and then we've got. Oh, we've got a football head. Yes! Oh, 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 oh. Very impressive, Clown. Very good. I, I think I might smash something. I hope you haven't. Oh. Um, okay, and then we've got. Oh, a phone. Yeah, I've got to phone my friends. Okay, yeah, what else? Uh, I get Spotify on it. Oh, right, so you listen to music on it as well. Yeah, and I watch FaceTube. You watch YouTube on Yeah, it. FaceTube, okay. that's what I said. Right, so you spend a bit of time on your phone as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, this looks interesting, Clown. I love a bit of Lego. So this is Star Wars Lego, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I've started doing it. Right, okay. I've got some for Christmas because Auntie Jo tells stories. Oh, and they're brilliant. They are very, very good. And I've written a story for her. You've written a story for Auntie Jo. So she can it? do it. Oh, so she can do it. Well, it's called Luke Skywalker Beats the Midianites. Well, that I'm sure that would be a very interesting conversation. Um, I'm not sure that Luke Skywalker actually is in the Bible, though. Oh, I never thought of that. Right, and then we've got oh, a nice Beano comic book. Book. Yeah, yeah, I love reading it by Beano and Dandy or and uh, Beza before bedtime. Oh, you read it at bedtime? Yeah, yeah, it makes me laugh. Right, so when you have your quiet settling down time, you read the Beano, do you? Yeah, 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 I okay. love reading the Beano. It makes me laugh. Oh, 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 oh. And then we've got, oh, clown. What's that then? A giant bottle of Coke Zero. Yeah. I'm, I'm... And hang on. Cookies and cream, mighty bites. Why are they in your bag? Because I like it for breakfast, dinner, tea and supper. Yes, but I'm sure your mummy doesn't let you have them. No, she doesn't. No, so we're going to go and put those up in a cupboard, I think. Oh, right. I and, love that. It's oh, really gorgeous. And of course, I can see that you have a laptop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got that for Christmas. And who bought it me? Your mummy and daddy? They did, and it's brilliant. It's brilliant, and I, I guess you do your schoolwork on here? Unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. So that's really, you've been very blessed to have that. Yeah, okay. I really am. So I can see you've got lots and lots of different things there that keep you incredibly busy. So, so, do so. Do you think, Clown, there is one thing there that you might be able to give up instead of doing that? 
you could read your Bible? Ah, uh, I don't want to give up Coke Zero and chocolate. I like my phone. Oh, what about my comic book? Okay, your comic book. That's a really good idea because I saw this on the side and oh, your action bible, I've, it was downstairs. I forgot about in that. In the back room, yeah. So that's a really good idea. Instead of reading your comic book every night, you could go to bed, read some of your action bible and learn about God and how to live for God and then say a prayer. And that'd be a lovely way to, to finish your day. And I think that would be a really great start. So, what I'll do, I'm going to pop this upstairs next to your bed. Yeah. And later on, I'll give you a gentle reminder um, about what we've talked about today. And you can swap your comic book for your Bible. That, right? sounds, that sounds a brilliant idea. You're always so clever. You always help me work things out. Well, I try. So, anyway, I will see you later, Clown. All right, bye. Yeah. Wow. That was good today. I hope you listen today, boys and girls, and learn from my mistakes. Please remember, it's not wrong to spend time on the things you like, but remember, make sure they don't come before you spend time with God. So that's it for me this week. I'll be back in a couple of weeks, I hope. Or is it months? I don't know. I'm going to unpack my bag now, or I might go and have some Coke Zero and some chocolate. I really like things like that. Lovely to see you. Bye-bye. Yeah, what can I do? Football? Yeah, the weather's gorgeous. Thank you.
Christ, the solid rock, we certainly stand, don't we? He is the, the cornerstone of our foundation. And so therefore, when we build our lives upon him, the, the cornerstone, which is a vital part in, in the building process or was of, 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 of a house, you can be assured that your house, your life is built um, on a good foundation and it'll be straight and it'll be solid. And so build your life on, on him. That leads to great faith and joy um, in him in life. All right, so we're going to be looking today at um, Genesis chapter 12, uh, verses 1 to 7, um, but we're going to be uh, focusing just a little bit this morning on verse 7. But we'll read Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 7, but focusing on uh, verse 7 um, for a little while. Okay, this is what it says. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family, from your father's house to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation and I will bless you and make your name great. You shall be a blessing and I will bless those who uh, bless you. I will curse him who curses you and in all your families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abraham was 75 years um, old when he departed from Haran. That's the northern part of um, uh, Iraq, right at the top end. Okay. Then Abraham took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people whom they had acquired in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abraham passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the terebinth tree of Moreh, and the Canaanites were then in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your descendants I will give this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who appeared to him. And there he built an altar to the Lord who appeared to him. Romans chapter 4 verse 16 tells us that um, Abraham um, is the father of faith. He's given to us um, as a great example of what it is to live out faith and to obey by faith. He's a great um, example uh, to us. And in this uh, message, which um, I think is much more of a, a practical message um, for us today, I pray that maybe we will um, learn from um, Abraham, or Abraham as it was uh, then, and uh, learn what it is to uh, practically do um, what we are um, um, called by, by God to do in particular moments in our lives. So on a recent uh, prayer walk, as you know by now, um, that's how I like to uh, engage and encounter uh, with, with God. I like to get out and, and be with him um, in the outside. And so on a recent uh, prayer walk, I really had a uh, a lovely, fresh experience of uh, the Lord upon my life, where I really felt God spoke into my innermost being, really spoke into uh, my spirit. And he gave me a word. Um, you know, when you, you uh, read a word from the scriptures and, and a particular passage or a word comes out from that scripture, a rhema, okay, uh, a specific uh, word for you. And, and that was a, a really comforting thing for me because it, it just confirmed things that I, were, uh, that I was feeling um, uh, a few weeks, maybe a, um, a few months uh, before. And this just helped me just to uh, kind of 
set my, my heart on the course that I, um, that I was thinking about uh, going on a, d- a decision. And so I was really grateful to the Lord that there was that particular uh, key time, a particular moment for me, that God really spoke to me. And that was quite an important time uh, for me. And it was at that particular um, experience um, that, I, that I had, I, I, I marked that moment. I marked that moment. That's why I'm calling this message, Marking the Moment. I recognized the importance of what God was saying to me at that particular time. Of course, God can speak to us every single day. He does speak to us every single day. He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says. So he's always speaking, and all his, his words are, are great moments in, in our lives. But there are moments that God does speak. Um, sometimes may feel louder than at other times, and um, a, a, a greater intense kind of uh, time. And this was one of those times for me where God really spoke to me and, and highlighted uh, to me that which I was thinking um, a little while before. And so it was a moment that I just sat there and took it in. I marked, I marked the moment. I recognized the importance of it. It was like I was saying to myself, or to God rather, okay God, I recognize this is a, a, a real intense time of your presence uh, upon me in this particular space, in this particular moment, I am here in you. And therefore, I am putting a stake in this particular day, in this particular time, I'm marking this moment. I do not want to set it aside as just some sort of everyday experience. I'm, I'm marking the, mo- the moment. I'm establishing it in my heart. I'm uh, memorializing it in, in my life. And I'm wanting, God, what, what you have said to me to take root in me, to establish me and to uh, reshape me and reform me so that I am able to um, do what it is that you are requiring of me to do. I mark the moment. I mark the moment. And this is what um, the, the passage that we've just read is, is telling us about in some way. That we, we have an understanding that God spoke to Abraham here um, in Haran. And God spoke to him and he said, I want you um, to go to another land. You are going to be a, a father of a, a nation, um, Israel. Israel, in my opinion, doesn't just relate to a land, it relates to a people. The same thing, the land and the people, they're they're, they're the covenants of God um, that he gave. And he said, you're going to be the father of a a new nation. You're going to have a new land. And so we're told, aren't we, in in verse 7, God appeared to Abraham and and spoke to him and said, your descendants um, I will give uh, to this uh, land. So God spoke to him uh, of a promise of what he was going to do in Abraham and through him. And now from the reading of the text, especially in in verse 7, I come to understand that Abraham saw um, a theophany, a theophany, a visible manifestation of God in human form. That's what people saw at times in in those days. It wasn't a, a regular occurrence, but it did happen from time to time. And this is what I believe um, Abraham saw. A theophany, a visible manifestation of God who came and spoke to him and gave him promises. Now these moments in the Old Testament um, of when God would come and and speak to people, um, intense expressions of God amongst his people, as I said, was not that um, unusual, but it, it, it did happen. And God did this to Abraham. And, and he said, you are going to be a father of the nation. Your descendants are going to have this land of Canaan. And in response to that particular um, time, God really spoke into him. We are told in verse 7 that he built an altar to the Lord who appeared to him. He built an altar to the Lord who appeared to him. Abraham recognized uh, this isn't just an ordinary uh, day. (laughs) This is a special moment. This is a special moment. The Lord is here. And the Lord has, has really intensely 
and sweetly and beautifully and powerfully and authoritatively spoken into my life. And he built an altar. He marked that moment of a particular encounter with the living God. You've got to remember that Abraham was 75 years of age. He was a pagan. He was a pagan. And God spoke to him. And he said, you're going to do something wonderful for me. At that moment, he would have come into some sort of a a new birth, no doubt. Um, You know, from maybe uh, chapter 12, verse 1 again, where where we're told um, the Lord spoke to Abraham. There would have been a new birth in Abraham because he was a pagan. So God chose this man out of his idolatry, out of a life that was outside of the things of God and brought him in to God's life. And he brought him into God's kingdom and God's rule. And to set him on a new course at that age. At that age. No one, regardless of any age, is written off in, 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 in God. Every age God considers, whether it be from the very young to, to the more senior. Whilst we have life, whilst we have breath, we have purpose. We have value in God's sight to to minister his good news, his his loving kingdom to people, to bring change into people's lives, to birth something new. In Abraham's case, it was a new nation. For some people, it might be it might be a new family, it might be a new church, it might be something starting new within a business. It, whatever it whatever it is. God wants to speak to you regardless of age because he has something for you and I. And so God appeared to him and Abraham, Abraham built an altar to the Lord to mark the moment. Wherever there were significant moments in people's lives in the Old Testament, they always marked it. They always marked it. So you could... Um, you can look, read these for yourself. So in Genesis chapter 28, um, Jacob was in a, a particular crisis moment of his life there and the Lord uh, met him and he recognized that the Lord was there and he built an altar unto the Lord. He marked that moment. This is significant. This could be a transitional time change in my life. We read in Joshua chapter 4, verses 4 and 6, that um, as the priests and then fo- following them, uh, the children of Israel crossed the Jordan River to go into uh, Canaan, we are told that they set up s- stones that were pulled up from the riverbed in, in Jordan and set them up. Why? To mark the moment, to memorialize, memorialize the time um, of, a, of a miraculous intervention of God that opened the way, that opened the gate for them to come into God's promised land and said, these stones will, um, will be a, a marker for any young generation that is coming through. You will be able to tell them, this is what the Lord has done for us. He's made a remarkable and miraculous way for us to come into his promised land. They memorialized that moment by setting up stones. Then we read in uh, the book of Numbers, chapter 21, verses 5 and 7. Um, there was the raising up, wasn't there, of the bronze servant. It was a moment um, that had been marked. There's a moment there of forgiveness and a moment of healing because we recognize that the people had sinned at, at that time. And the Lord brought fiery serpents. We, we know that story. And, and in order to, to bring about healing and in order to recognize a forgiveness of sins, ultimately foreshadowing Jesus Christ, a bronze serpent was put up on a pole. And they marked the moment. And God said, if you look to that, there, there, there will be my healing and forgiving flow that will come upon your lives. There are moments that God speaks to us whereby maybe it might be a healing moment in our lives, that God wants to heal you, not just physically, but there's other areas in our lives. Or there may be times in our lives where we are called to to bring forgiveness to others. And there's a moment and God says, you must forgive if you want to release. 
or you have to um, allow people to, to come to you and, and allow them to speak into your life and to say that they've done wrong against you or whatever it might be. There are different moments that God meets with you in order to minister in a particular way in your life that will set you forwards for a future that he has for you. And it's at those moments God comes and does something in your life and speaks to you and identifies something in your life. And it's those moments that you need to mark and say, Lord, I let it take root in me. I let it um, take time to shape me. In in the New Testament, we read in Matthew chapter 17, um, the Mount of Transfiguration. You know, when Jesus was transfigured before uh, Peter, James, and John, and um, they're like, hey, we've got to build some altars here. One for you, Jesus, one for Moses, one for Elijah. They recognize these, these disciples um, and the people of the Old Testament recognize there are times that you have to mark. There are times you need to sit still. There are times you need to allow these moments of God that, 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 that you and I encounter, you must not let it pass aside but you must recognize it as something that is important in your life that God is wanting to do in you in order to prepare you. And I want to encourage everyone here today and declare that God desires that you encounter him, that you encounter the living God. He wants to speak into your life. And for us today as New Testament Christians, God appearing as he did um, with Abraham is not the usual way that we encounter God. I believe God encounters come every day in, in, in various ways. Comes through the word of God. Can come through the ministry of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we, we read in uh, 1 Corinthians 12. God can speak um, through dreams and visions. We read of that in, in Acts um, chapter 2. God can speak to us in song. God speaks to us in various ways. And when we experience these um, God encounter moments. I want to encourage you, mark it. Mark that moment. Establish it in your heart. Let what God has spoken into you at that moment take root. Write it down. I've got here, this is, this is a, my old Bible um, I, was, I, I was given um, back in uh, I think it was about 2000. It's an old uh, King James prophetic uh, Bible. And back in 2008, um, I was living in um, Henley uh, on Thames in Oxfordshire, but I would attend a church in, in, in Reading. And God spoke to me uh, through a, a minister. His name was Ray Westbrook. And he was speaking from Acts chapter 9. And This was his message title, and it always gets me, and I can always cry it. There was a man. There was a man. And the whole message was about um, Ananias, that God had called to a particular ministry purpose, which was to go and pray over the Apostle Paul, who had been blind at that moment after his Damascus Road experience. And he was to come and lay his hands on him. Through that, the Holy Spirit would come uh, upon his life. For the baptism of the Holy Spirit, he was already saved, but there was a baptism of the Holy Spirit moment in there. You, you um, Bible scholars, you have a look and do your, do your reading in 1 Corinthians 14 and Acts 22. That will help you um, to see it, a distinct experience. And he called Ananias. He said, I want you to go and minister. And so the message was, there was a man. And all of a sudden, he started speaking. Um, to, to, um, he said, there's someone in the church. He said, you're the man. <laughs> you're the man. There is a man here that God is calling. Had no idea. He had no idea what had been on my heart for, for years for years, I'd been in, um, uh, in leadership in, 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 in the church that I was in then, okay, and, and I'd ministered over various um, years, but I was still in the golf industry at that time. But I knew, I sensed the calling of God on my life, and he, and he preached it, and he said, there is a man, and God is calling you. And that was the moment, that was the moment God spoke to me and said, now's a transitional change in your life. Now." Is, is the day that I want you to move into a new calling upon your life. And I've written it down here, the 28th of February, 2008, 8.15 p.m. was when I knew I was called 
into the ministry that day. And it was a wonderful experience. And Claire will tell you, I, <laughs> I phoned her up that night. And I kept shouting down the phone, I'm the man, <laughs> I'm the man. And she said, well, I know you're the man, I think, I think you're fit. And I said, no, not that, kind of, not that kind of man, I'm the man. I'm the man God has called, I'm the man God has called into the ministry. And I knew at that moment, when God calls you, mark the moment, mark it. Write it down, establish it, because then you're going to go through various seasons of good seasons and low seasons. And you need to know that actually when you write those down, when you mark those moments down, you can look back at them and say, no, God spoke to me clearly. Therefore, I can continue strong in that which he has called. What is the significance of marking a moment? It's this. When God speaks, he intends to work something important in our lives in the present, which will enable us to move into the purpose for what he has in the future. So the significance of Mark in the moment is this. At that time, God, at this moment that you are speaking, we are willing to be changed. We're willing to be changed. You have spoken into our lives and I believe that what you said will come to pass. And so therefore, what you have said to us, we are willing to change. Mark in the moment means that we surrender our rights for how we want these things to work out. We relinquish our lives unto him. And we allow him at that time and in the process of that moment that he has called us to shape us to mould us so that we can fit what he has for us, so that you and I can be fit for purpose. So we say, God, you be the potter and I'll be the clay. So what these moments are, they're altering moments. Abraham set up an altar. They are altering moments. There's always a price to pay for an altar moment. There is always a price to pay for the marking of a moment that God will ask you or me to lay something down that is not conducive to what it is that he has. A mindset, a heart attitude, even maybe a skill that you are to relinquish because he has something else. It doesn't mean to say that skill wasn't any good. It might be used in some way in the future or it's shaped you, enabled to, um, it's shaped you so that you're enabled to, to go forwards in the future. But he'll ask you to lay something down. He'll ask you to open yourself for him to change you and shape you. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18, we are told that we are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as the Spirit um, of the Lord. In other words, we're always, and we should always be on a life-altering journey, always being transformed, always being shaped, which always means that we have to lay things down. The Apostle Paul says in Philippians chapter 3, verse 12, that he wants to lay hold of that for which Christ has taken hold of him. How does he do that? He says, forgetting what is behind. In other words, I'm willing to be altered. And I don't know what it is, friends, that maybe God wants to alter in your life. Like he's been altering in my life. As our faces differ, so um, do the ways that he alters our lives. But he wants to speak to you. He wants to birth something new, like he birthed something new in, in Abraham. At 75 years of age, a new nation for him. A new land for him. And God wants to birth something new in you. I wonder what that is. I wonder what it is he wants to change in you maybe. To release us from things. I wonder what it is. But God will come and he will meet you. And I want to encourage you at these times. When you have these particular distinct moments. And there are distinct moments in our lives. We recognize the distinct moments in our lives of, of the celebration of birthdays or, or the loss of loved ones or anniversaries. There are distinct moments in our lives. There's distinct moments when, for instance, this church started. There are moments. And when God comes to you 
in these precious times of moments and he speaks to you in your devotional time or in a service or whatever it is, it's because he wants to do something fresh and new in you. And you are to mark it and say, here I am, Lord, wholly available. As for me, I will serve the Lord. I come and I say, alter me so I can be fit for purpose. I wonder what that is. Paul says in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20, My old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting and living for the Son of God. There's always a price to pay for renewal. And Paul goes on to say in Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, and I'll read this from the Message Bible. Once we have laid down our lives, it says this, He brings gifts into our lives, much the same way fruit appears in an orchard. God desires, friends, you and I, to be fruitful in his purposes in the present and in the future, bursting forth in renewed, redemptive purposes for us. And so he comes and he speaks to you through a word, through the gifts of the Spirit, through a song, maybe in a daily devotional time, maybe in a walk and you see something and all of a sudden God comes and he speaks to you. That's a moment. That's a moment. And he's wanting to do something in you like he wanted to do something in Abraham. It's a fresh start. It's a time of altering to fit you for a, an exciting future ahead. And we are called to mark the moment, to establish it in our hearts, to take root of that time, to write it down and give ourselves to the Lord to say, okay, here, come and have me. Come and, come, and, come and take my life. Do with me as you want. And as we do that, and as we relinquish our rights and ways and we allow him and that moment to take root in us, then things will start to open up of what it is that he wants. Marking the moment. So I just want to encourage you, friends, from this passage of scripture, a simple practical principle. When God speaks, listen, mark the moment, open yourself to it, allow his change to come in the present because that is fitting you for the future, what he has in your life. Let's pray. Father, I come to you now um, and ask that you would take this uh, very simple maybe a very practical message and ask that you would uh, use it um, to speak or to minister into um, people's lives as Lord you um, ministered into mine when you spoke to me and it really impacted my life. I pray God that it will uh, be a message that might encourage uh, people to be impacted in the same way and to mark the moments when you call upon them. Lord, I pray for this in your precious name. And Lord, for uh, the rest of this day ahead, I pray that your hand will be upon every uh, person who is watching. I pray that you would um, be with them and unto them all that they need. Pray, Lord, that your spirit would be near them today and they will recognize your presence amongst them. And Lord, we just want to say we love you. We love you. And this life is all about you. And we want to live for you and we want to live for your glory. So come, Lord, and have your way in us. To thine be the glory. Great things you have done and you are doing. Amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of the day.